on the hits. Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Jonathan Evans. And I'm Ashley Thompson. This program is aimed at English learners. So we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. Today on the program, you will hear from Jill Robbins and Alice Bryant. Later, Steve Ember will present our American history series, The Making of a Nation. But first, here is Jill Robbins. The United Nations says more women and children were killed or wounded in Afghanistan in the first half of 2021 than in the first six months of any year since 2009. That is when the United Nations began keeping count. The UN Afghanistan Protection of Civilians and Armed Conflict Office produces such a report every six months. It said in all there were 1,659 civilians killed and 3,254 wounded. That was a 47% increase compared with the same period last year. Deborah Lyons is the UN Secretary General's Special Representative for Afghanistan. She asked the Taliban and Afghan leaders to pay closer attention to the current path of the war and its terrible effects on civilians. Men still make up most of the civilian casualties, but the rise among women and children is sharp. 32% of the casualties in the first half of this year were children, with 468 killed and 1,214 wounded. 14% of civilian casualties were women, with 219 killed and 508 wounded, the report said. Taliban rebels have quickly captured more territory in recent weeks. They took control of border crossings with several neighboring countries and threaten a number of area capitals. The gains come as the last U.S. and NATO soldiers leave Afghanistan. The report says there was an especially sharp rise in casualties since May 1st, when international military forces began withdrawing. That operation is more than 95% complete. All U.S. NATO forces are to be out of the country by August 31st. Taliban leaders have said they do not want to take total control of the country. But they say there will not be peace in Afghanistan until they have a place in a new government and President Ashraf Ghani is ousted. Lyons, the UN representative, also heads the UN mission in Afghanistan. She called on the Taliban and Afghan leaders to make greater efforts at the negotiations. Stop the Afghan against Afghan fighting. Protect the Afghan people and give them hope for a better future, she said. The UN report warned that Afghanistan is headed toward its highest number of yearly civilian casualties since 2009. It noted that much of the fighting during the months of May and June took place outside cities in areas with comparatively low population levels. The pursuit of a military solution will only increase the suffering of the Afghan people, the report said. It blamed anti-government forces for most of all civilian casualties. The report said the main cause of civilian casualties was improvised explosive devices, or IEDs, followed by fighting on the ground and targeted killings. More than 300 civilians were killed or wounded in one attack at the Syed ul-Shuhuda school in Kabul. 
The attack took place in the second half of the school day, when the school is attended by females only. Girls represent most of the more than 300 civilian casualties, including the 85 students killed. No one has claimed responsibility for that attack, the report said. But the Taliban opposes the education of females. I'm Jill Robbins. The 2021 film, Infinite, centers on character Evan McCauley, who discovers that he has had several past lives. A group of other people with past life experiences seek his help to find and destroy a device that threatens all life on Earth. American film storylines have a long tradition of being over the top, but there is something about most of these films that is realistic, the dialogue. American movies can offer some of the most natural examples of spoken American English, including the speed of speech, word choice, expressions, shortened word forms, and accents. Yet, if you watch one of these films in English, you may find the language difficult to understand. The actors might speak fast or unclearly. Captions can help. They are the words of the dialogue that appear on the screen as they are spoken. Fast speech, however, means captions disappear quickly. This can leave you unsure of what an actor has said. There are some things that may help you with this problem. Movie trailers are one example. A movie trailer is a short video advertisement for a film. On today's education tips, I will explain how these short videos can improve your English. Though movie trailers are usually just two to three minutes, they can be extremely effective. In watching them, you can sharpen your listening skills while also learning new words and expressions. You can even practice how to say words that are difficult or that you have never heard before. The best place to find official American movie trailers is on YouTube. YouTube provides a lot of advantages for an English learner. The site is free and contains a countless number of videos in English. But two YouTube technical elements are especially helpful. Closed captions and changeable playback settings. With closed captions, you can read the dialogue as you watch and listen. And with playback settings, you can slow down the speech if someone is talking too fast. Now let's talk about steps you can take to get the most out of watching movie trailers. The first step is to find them. Go to YouTube and do a search for something like this as an example. Official Trailer 2021 Several film trailers will appear and you can choose one that looks interesting. Animated films can be an especially good choice for English practice, no matter your age. These films are usually humorous and relatable. To find animated films, 
Try doing a search for something like Animated Official Trailer 2019, for example. Make sure the video you choose offers closed captioning, which you will use later. You can find the closed caption mark at the bottom of the video. It may be listed as CC or something else. Keep in mind that trailers more than five or seven years old may not offer closed captions on YouTube. So, choose newer videos. Next, watch the video at normal speed without closed captions. Try to understand what the story is about overall. Then, watch it again to seek more details. With this method, you are testing your English skills. It will give you an idea of whether the dialogue is too fast or difficult for your skill level. Next is step three. Watch the video again, this time with closed captions. Find the CC setting at the bottom of the video and activate the captions. This can help you in several ways. You can confirm whether you understood the dialogue in your first viewings, make clearer any dialogue you did not understand, and connect the sound of words with their spellings. You can also write down a few of the new words in a notebook or on your mobile phone. After watching with captions, if the actors are still talking too fast, you can take the next step. Slow down the playback speed and watch the video again. To change the speed, go to the bottom of the video and click on the settings wheel. Choose playback settings and then choose 0.75. Slowing the playback speed not only makes dialogue clearer, but also slows how fast the captions appear, making them easier to read. A word of warning, however. Movie trailers generally contain music and sound effects. They might sound a little strange at a slower speed. After you have watched the video at 0.75 speed, you are ready for the final step. Watch the video once more, this time at normal speed without captions. At this point, you will probably notice a huge improvement in your understanding. And you probably will have learned some new words and expressions. Keep a notebook or a note page on your phone to write down a few words and expressions from each trailer you watch. In your notes, you can also summarize the storyline using some of the language it contained. Later, try using this new language as you speak and write English in your everyday life. Give this method a try and let us know how it goes. A short movie trailer can offer a good 30 minutes of practice and help sharpen several of your English skills at once. I'm Alice Bryant. To help protect yourself against the new coronavirus, wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water before you eat after using the toilet, and after touching anything many other people touch, like a seat on a public bus. If you cannot wash your hands with soap and water, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. Taking these steps can help prevent not only the new coronavirus disease, but also colds, flu, and other viruses. 
For more information, visit the following websites. The World Health Organization at www.who.int or the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention at www.cdc.gov. Today on The Making of a Nation, we tell about slavery and how it affected the history of the United States. Here is Steve Ember. Slavery is the custom of one person controlling or owning another. Some historians say it began following the development of farming about 10,000 years ago. People forced prisoners of war to work for them. Other slaves were criminals or people who could not repay money they owed. It is said the first known slaves lived more than 5,000 years ago in the Sumerian society of what is now Iraq. Slavery also existed among people in China, India, Africa, the Middle East, and the Americas. It expanded as trade and industry increased. This increase created a demand for a labor force to produce goods for export. Slaves did most of the work. Most ancient people thought of slavery as a natural condition that could happen to anyone at any time. Few saw it as evil or unfair. In most cities, slaves could be freed by their owners and become citizens. In later times, slaves provided the labor needed to produce products that were in demand. Sugar was one of these products. Italians established large sugar farms beginning around the 12th century. They used slaves from Russia and other parts of Europe to do the work. By the year 1300, African blacks had begun to replace the Russian slaves. They were bought or captured from North African Arabs who used them as slaves for years. By the 1500s, Spain and Portugal had American colonies. The Europeans forced native Indians to work in large farms and mines in the colonies. Most of the Indians died from European diseases and poor treatment. So the Spanish and Portuguese began to bring in people from West Africa as slaves. France, Britain, and the Netherlands did the same in their American colonies. England's southern colonies in North America developed a farm economy that could not survive without slave labor. Many slaves lived on large farms called plantations. These plantations produced important crops traded by the colony, crops such as cotton and tobacco. Each plantation was like a small village owned by one family. That family lived in a large house usually facing a river. Many separate buildings were needed on a plantation. For example, a building was needed for cooking, and buildings were needed for workers to produce goods such as furniture that were used on the plantation. 
The business of the plantation was farming. So there also were barns for animals and buildings for storing and drying crops. There was a house to smoke meat so it could be kept safely. And there was a place on the river from which goods were sent by ship to England. The plantation owner controlled the farm and saw that it earned money. He supervised, fed, and clothed the people living on the property, including the slaves. Larger plantations might have 200 slaves. They worked in the fields on crops that would be sold or eaten by the people who lived on the plantation. They also raised animals for meat worked very long and hard. They worked each day from the time the sun rose until it set. Many of these slaves lived in extreme poverty in small houses with no heat or furniture. Sometimes five or ten people lived together in one room. House slaves usually lived in the home of the plantation owner. They did the cooking and cleaning in the house. House slaves worked fewer hours than field slaves, but were more closely supervised by the owner and his family. Laws approved in the southern colonies made it illegal for slaves to marry, own property, or earn their freedom. These laws also barred slaves from receiving an education or even learning to read. But some owners permitted their slaves to earn their freedom or gave them money for good work. Other owners punished slaves to get them to work. The punishments included beatings, withholding food, and threatening to sell members of a slave's family. Some plantation owners executed slaves suspected of serious crimes by hanging them or burning them alive. Historians say that people who were rich enough to own many slaves became leaders in their local areas. They were members of the local governments. They attended meetings of the legislatures in the capitals of their colonies, usually two times a year. Slave owners had the time and the education to greatly influence political life in the southern colonies because the hard work on their farms was done by slaves. Today, most people in the world condemn slavery that was not true in the early years of the American nation. Many Americans thought slavery was evil but necessary. Yet, owning slaves was common among the richer people in the early 1700s. Many of the leaders in the colonies who fought for American independence owned slaves. This was true in the northern colonies as well as the southern ones. One example is the famous American diplomat, inventor, and businessman, Benjamin Franklin. He owned slaves for 30 years and sold them at his general store. But his ideas about slavery changed during his long life. Benjamin Franklin started the first schools to teach blacks and later argued for their freedom. Slavery did not become a force in the northern colonies, mainly because of economic reasons. Cold weather and poor soil 
could not support such a farm economy as was found in the South. As a result, the North came to depend on manufacturing and trade. Trade was the way colonists got the English goods they needed. It was also the way to earn money by selling products found in the New World. New England became a center for such trade across the seas. The people who lived there became shipbuilders so they could send the products to England. They used local wood to build the ships. They also sold wood and wood products. They became businessmen carrying goods around the world. The New England shipbuilding towns near the Atlantic Ocean grew quickly as a result. The largest of these towns was Boston, Massachusetts. By 1720, it had more than 10,000 people. Only two towns in England were larger, London and Bristol. More than 25% of the men in Boston had invested in shipping or worked in it. Ship captains and businessmen held most of the public offices. The American colonies traded goods such as whale oil, ginger, iron, wood, and rum, an alcoholic drink made from sugar cane. Ships carried these goods from the New England colonies to Africa. There they were traded for black Africans who became slaves in the American colonies. The Africans had been captured by enemy tribesmen and sold to African slave traders. The New England ship captains would buy as many as they could put on their ships. Conditions on these ships were cruel. The Africans were crowded together and forced to travel in areas so small they could hardly move. Some were kept in chains. Many killed themselves rather than live under such conditions. Others died of health disorders they caught on the ship. Yet many did survive the trip and became slaves in the southern colonies or in the Caribbean islands. Black slaves were needed to work on Caribbean sugar plantations. The southern American colonies needed them to work on the tobacco and rice plantations. By 1750, almost 25% of the total number of people in the American colonies were black slaves. From the 1500s to the 1800s, Europeans sent about 12 million black slaves from Africa to America. Almost 2 million people died on those slave ships. Historians say English ships carried the greatest number of Africans into slavery. One slave ship captain came to hate what he was doing and turned to religion. His name was John Newton. He stopped taking part in the slave trade and became a leader in the Anglican Church. He is famous for having written the song Amazing Grace. And that's our program for today. Listen again tomorrow to learn English through stories from around the world. I'm Jonathan Evans. And I'm Ashley Thompson. 